Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope all of you are doing well and staying safe. Continuing on our endeavor to understand the ship's certificates, today we will discuss about safety construction certificate or in short as we call it, call it SAFCON certificate. We will try to discuss that what are the parts of the ship that are covered by the SAFCON certificate and is there an overlap between these parts covered by SAFCON and other certificates like load line certificate or class certificate. If we go by an overall view, the parts of the ship which are covered by SAFCON certificate are the overall hull structure of the ship, the main propulsion and auxiliary machineries, boilers, electrical installations of the ship, steering gear, as well as the equipments of the ship like mooring winches, etc. We should understand that SAFCON certificate is a statutory certificate which is issued by the flag state or by a classification society on behalf of the flag state verifying that the construction of the ship is as per international regulations or IMO regulations as adopted by the flag state inspection sorry by the flag state so basically it is says that the international conventions like SOLAS or other conventions are complying during the construction of the ship. It is interesting to note that most of the parts of the ship that are covered by SAFCON certificate are also covered by the certificate of class. The certificate of class is issued by the class society after the ship complies with all the class requirements. So, class certificate signifies that all the class rules are uh, verified and satisfied by the ship, whereas the SAFCON certificate verifies that all the international requirements like SOLAS, etc., are complied by the ship. As I mentioned earlier, most of the parts of the ship that are covered by SAFCON certificate are also covered by certificate of class. And also the parts of the ship which are also a load line item are covered by the load line certificate. For example, say the hatch covers of the ship, they are a load line item as well as a part of safety construction certificate of the ship. This part is also covered by the certificate of class. Hence, if there is a defect with say the hatch covers, a condition of class may be issued by the class and it will be linked to the class certificate, the SAFCON certificate as well as the load line certificate. Now let us say there is a problem with the main engine of the ship. This is covered by the SAFCON certificate and the certificate of class, but not by the load line certificate as this is not a load line item. Hence, if there is a problem with the main engine of the ship, a condition of class may be issued, which will be linked to the certificate of class and the certificate SAFCON. Uh, I hope this gives a bit of a clear understanding as to the overlap between the items covered by SAFCON, class and load line certificate. Next, we will try to do a deep dive into the contents of the safety construction or SAFCON certificate. On the screen, you can see a snapshot of the SAFCON certificate. In the next slide, we will do a deep dive into the contents. If we see the top part of the 
SAFCON certificate, it says that the certificate is issued under the authority of the government and the name of the flag state and by the name of the classification society. So this makes it very clear that this certificate is a statutory certificate which is authorized by the flag state but the class society has just carried out the inspection on behalf of the flag state and issued the certificate. Also on the top you can see terms like short term, in term, interim, conditional etc. So if you pick up a SAFCON certificate of your vessel and it has nothing mentioned like a short term, interim or conditional, it means that it is a full term certificate with a validity of five years. However, if due to certain conditions or reasons a short term or interim certificate is issued that would be clearly mentioned on the top of the certificate. Next, if we go to the first section, we see that on the top the particulars of the ship will be mentioned like the name of the ship, the distinctive letters, port of registry, gross tonnage, dead weight, IMO number, etc. Next, it would be mentioned the type of the ship. So basically here you can see that there are four or five categories, bulk carrier, oil tanker, chemical tanker, etc. So say if it is a bulk carrier, only the name bulk carrier will be visible and the other four or five ship types will either be deleted or they will be crossed off to signify that they are not applicable. Next section is the building details of the vessel like the date of building contract, date of keel laying, date of delivery and also the date on which a major conversion is has taken place. So if a major conversion has taken place in the vessel, this will become very important and will be mentioned in the certificate. If we go to the next section, this says that this is to certify that point number one is the ship is surveyed according to the requirements of regulation 1-10 of the convention. This refers back to the SOLAS convention which uh, is about the safety construction of the vessel. Next we see that for point number two sub point one it says that this certificate verifies that the condition of the structure, machinery and equipment as defined by regulation uh, of SOLAS has been satisfactory, is satisfactory. If we come to sub point number two of two, it is, it is about a gas fuel ship. So this point will only be applicable or part G will be applicable if it is a ship where the main propulsion fuel is a gas. Otherwise, this one will be uh, will be marked as not applicable. Now coming to a very interesting point, which is point number three about exemption certificate. So we all know that the standards to which a ship must be built or the safety uh, requirements which the ship uh, shall meet are clearly stated in conventions like SOLAS and other conventions. And ideally, when a ship is built, these requirements are fulfilled. However, there can be situations where, say, it is an experimental design of a ship or an experimental design of an engine or something like that, where the requirements as stated in SOLAS may not be complied in a straightforward way, but it might be proved through alternative assessment uh, that the safety measures or the design of the ship is offering the equivalent amount of protection or safety as required by the convention. In this case, what normally happens is if say the if for example say the firefighting system of a ship is of an experimental design or it cannot fully comply with the requirements of the uh, 
requirements of the convention. Then the builder of the shape would prepare a detailed document uh, which justifies how the alternate firefighting system that is installed on board is providing an equivalent protection uh, as required by the original design. And this document would be verified and approved by the flag administration or the classification society on behalf of the flag administration. Alternatively also, there can be cases where a certain regulation may not be applicable for the ship because of its particular or peculiar design. For example, for a small supply support vessel, the location of the aft lights or a certain part of the structure may not fully comply with the requirement of SOLAS because of the peculiarity of the design. In this case, on a case-to-case -case basis, a exemption might be provided by the flag administration for the requirement. In both these cases, along with the SAFCON certificate, an exemption certificate will be issued, which signifies or states in detail what is the exemption that was agreed by the flag administration. And this exemption certificate becomes an integral part of the safety construction certificate and is always to be attached and kept with the, uh, with the safety construction certificate. So in this, now coming back to this, point number three is only applicable when an exemption certificate has been issued. And the point number four will identify the official number of the document or the exemption document which was approved by the flag administration while giving the exemption certificate. Hope this gives a bit of an idea about exemption certificate and alternative design. Next we can see that it says completion date of the survey on which the certificate is based. This is the date of the last renewal survey and does not change until the next renewal survey of the ship. The issue date is the date on which the certificate is issued along with the place and the signature of the uh, class surveyor or authority who has issued the certificate. Next, we come to the endorsement page of the certificates. So as I had mentioned earlier, for statutory certificates, there are only four annual surveys. But for the class certificate, there are five annual surveys. So here you see the four uh, annual surveys are marked. However, second year and third year annual survey are also marked as intermediate survey. So basically, the intermediate SAFCON survey of the vessel can be carried out either with the second annual survey or with the third annual survey. So say for example, the during the second annual survey, the intermediate survey is carried out. Hence, the intermediate survey will be endorsed during the second annual survey and the third annual survey will be a normal annual survey. Alternatively, if intermediate survey is not carried out during the second annual survey, then it will be carried out during the third annual survey and the certificate will be endorsed accordingly. Also, if you see the next section which says about endorsement for the inspection of the outside of the ship's bottom. So as you remember, in certificate of class, also uh, it was mentioned about the inspection of the bottom of the ship. In the SAFCON certificate also, we have a section for the bottom inspection and once the bottom inspection of the ship is done, this section is endorsed by the surveyor who has done the bottom survey. So that was a short video for today. Hope uh, you liked the video and if you find the content of this channel interesting and um, informative, please like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.